Hey, welcome. My name is Carly Stevens. This is Carly Stevens Books, and I am thrilled to have my audiobook narrator, Jake Ruddle, with me today. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's in his, uh, his studio. So this is just an absolute treat. Did we have spoken one other time? If you want to look at that whole interview, it is on my English Nerd channel. I will link that down below. Um, but yes, it is awesome to be talking with you again. <laughs> It's been a long, long time, and it's an absolute pleasure. Yeah, so for anybody who doesn't um, already know, would you just kind of recap how you got into audio work and kind of how we, you know, ended up collaborating on the Tanium Academy series? So my uh, road into audio has been uh, sort of w winding and slightly random, um, but I've, I've, I've wound up here coming from street theatre and uh, from various different um, sort of angles of performance uh, and just generally liking the sound of my own voice, um, <laughs> and uh, which, which is a skill that you have to learn. Um, but uh, yeah, I've I've wound up here as uh, an audiobook narrator, and it's something that I absolutely love now, and um, yeah, is a big part of who I am. So uh, yeah, I, I originally started on uh, the ACX uh, platform, Amazon's and Audible's um, sort of indie uh, narrator author platform, um, and uh, we got into contact. Was it through ACX? It was through ACX, yeah. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so we originally contacted through ACX and uh, then have been working through various platforms and and worked together across this whole series, which has been an absolute pleasure and um, a real honor to be able to be part of the whole process. Um, yeah, it's been really, really incredible. Well, thanks. Yeah, so um, you just finished up the last book in the series. Um, Kingdoms on Fire, which is, you know, coming out in audio very soon after this um, interview goes live. It's basically as soon as the different platforms, you know, Audible and um, Kobo and all of that can actually approve it. But um, yeah, that means that the the whole series is is wrapped up, which is um, nuts. Like it's it's wonderful, but it's a little it's a little bittersweet. I got to the end and I was like, oh. Well, I was I was almost in tears to be perfectly honest because it was it was a whole experience. But um... I found myself in a coffee shop the other day, and I was reading the Tan Yuan stories uh, just on my own, listening to the music that was playing and reading these books, and thinking, "Gosh, the, these are my stories. Obviously, they're your stories, but I have such a." Um, a connection to them now and I, I I love them so much and uh it's it's only got stronger the the further down the series we've 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 gone I've uh, I've loved it so much it's been amazing <laughs> that was that that was a pretty incredible note in in that email you know to say that these are your characters and um yeah I mean that that meant so much to me because they are like that yes they're my characters but they're your characters as well you are the voice of you know Furion and and Kyria and everybody else to a lot of people. So it's it's awesome that we can both kind of share that, um, you know, ownership of it, I guess. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, so today what I was thinking is uh, getting into a bit more of, you know, creative collaboration, like what that looks like. And um, I had some questions for you about that. And then at the end of this video, we're going to talk about um, things like our favorite scenes and some behind the scenes stuff. Um, but that's all going to be full of spoilers. So I will let you know when that part is coming up in case you want to save that for after you've read or listened to um, the books. But I am super excited to be able to talk in a spoilery way. Um, but Hashtag before we spoilers. get there, <laughs> what's that? Hashtag spoilers. <laughs> yes, I'm just I'm so anti spoiler. I'm I'm very <laughs> careful, even when I'm teaching. Um, you know, I'm an English teacher for anybody who doesn't who doesn't know. Um, like I don't tell them what happens at the end of Hamlet or A Tale of Two Cities. And I know these things have been around for hundreds of years, and it's not like it's hard to look it up. 
but if it's if it, if I can make it new for anybody, then I'm going to make it new for somebody <laughs> because it's just so good that way. Um, so getting back to um, the creative collaboration idea, um, obviously we have worked together on these three books um, largely independently, I would say, except for the mm. very beginning. The beginning, it was a lot of back and forth, but Kingdom yeah. was on Fire, for example, it was mostly just you just, you knew what to do when you were, you were going, but what has been the hardest part of, of collaborating on a creative project like this, where it's mine, but it's yours, kind of like what we were, what we were saying? It's a really, really interesting process. And the hardest part for me is wrestling with the anxiety around whether or not I'm doing a good job. Um, because I'm uh, always trying to deliver these characters and deliver the story as well as I can. And I want to make sure that first and foremost, I'm making my authors happy. I'm making you happy. Um, because it's your story and it's your baby that you've brought up into into the world and published and made into a thing. And I'm just here sort of stomping all over <laughs> your ideas and your words. And, uh, and I want to uh, step as gently as I can um, to begin with. And then eventually we get into this flow where actually I know who the characters are and I know them well enough to be able to tread confidently and take my own uh, my own sort of flow with it um, and need to ask you for questions on specific things but generally I feel I'm able to sort of trust my relationship with the story and trust mm -hmm. my relationship with you to be able to um, yeah look after each other in in what we're doing um, so yeah the hardest part for me is battling the anxiety of whether or not I'm I'm succeeding and just let myself go and and get into the performances because uh it is it is um challenging especially at the beginning when you don't know the other person on the end of the emails and you've never necessarily had this nice um sort of relationship with them and uh it can be really really daunting <laughs> hmm. yeah it's it, it was interesting for me as well, there were certain things that I, I knew I wanted um, right at the beginning. I was super upfront about certain characters and how they kind of had, mm. had to sound like this. Um, but there was so much gray area in both the narration and some of the characters that I didn't have a you know crystal clear voice for. I mean, I could I could hear them, but it's it's not like I had to, to take a stand on on everybody. And so there, there have been times when your performance does not sound like the voice in my head at all, but there is something kind of beautiful about that in a way too, when it's, when it does fall into that gray area, because it's, it's a performance of the book. Of course, it's not going to be my own mm. head. You know, it's, it's you bringing yourself into it. And there's, there's something kind of cool about you bringing a new person you know, a new person's perspective. Um, That's to something own. that I've always talked about with uh, coaches who I've worked with, and and as I've been learning and developing my skills in this in this sort of industry, um, is that the the performance and the story are two separate things. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I read a book to be able to hear hear the story in my own head, and I listen to a book to be able to hear someone performing a story to me. And, um, and that's something that helps with this sort of anxiety is trusting the process uh, and trusting that the performance is valuable um, because it's hard to see that sometimes. Um, and uh, I imagine that it's difficult for your end to be able to um, trust in that as well because uh, it, it is something that's, that's quite fraught, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, I, w I was you know, I was pretty intense at the beginning <laughs> because Absolutely. it is such a, such a time commitment and a financial commitment and just a commitment for my, my characters and my story. You know, I love mm. it so much. I didn't want somebody to just, you know, stomp all over it. But from, from the beginning, I could tell that you were not the kind of person who like you, you wanted to be respectful of my vision for it. And, 
um, you know, do do right by it. So I trusted you pretty quickly. It's one of yeah. the things that that sold me on on choosing you. That and the bard voice, nailing the bard voice right away, because there's such know. a um, a balance between. Uh, I I cannot tell you how how valuable detailed notes are, and mm -hmm. an author being a being confident to be able to tell you, okay, so this is what this character sounds like, and here's a bunch of videos of of like uh, character reads for them, <laughs> and then this is the ideas that they're going on in for them, and how how you're going to create this character, and and these like really really detailed nuanced um, performative notes are brilliant, and then. Um, sort of trusting that also there's uh, there's the freedom at my end to be able to know that I'm not an impressionist. I'm not going to be doing this actor. I'm not doing a Daniel Day Lewis. I'm not doing a Johnny Depp. I'm doing my characters. I'm doing me. Mm -hmm. um, I might use those characters as as uh, inspirational reads, but um, but that's not uh, where I'm going with it. And then yeah, this trust to be able to go back and forth with it is uh, is so valuable. I'm so glad you like the detailed notes because that's that's the the teacher in me like you know when you write an essay prompt you need to be able to just point to anything that they have a question about there's there's exactly what I want but yeah that was that was something else that I was really grateful for I would send you all these really detailed notes about everything and and your response was so positive and grateful i'm like okay well i'm so glad that that didn't come across as you know um stepping on your creative toes or no or because what you're toes. doing is what you're doing is giving me uh information and inspiration but then but then stepping back and letting me work and not micromanaging mm -hmm. um and that's the that's what's great about this being um as collaborative as it has been um is being able to work together on something as opposed to being worried the whole way through as to whether or not I'm doing it right. right. Um, yeah, because I'm performing and I am doing it right because I'm performing. And the times when I haven't done it right, I've known it because I can hear it and I re-record it. And uh, yeah, it, it, it feels really nice to be able to collaborate so deeply. Yeah, so that, that kind of leads me to my next my next thing then. You, you have very distinct voices for each of the characters, um, which I which I think is great, even for the narration. If you listen to the the audiobook, it's slight, but when there's you know a Furian chapter or a Kyria chapter, the narration itself is a little bit um, different. And then there's some new um, new points of view in the final book, which I just had so much fun writing. And and even for those, you know, you gave it just that little bit of of that character. Um, so what is your process? Like, obviously I give you all my, all my notes, but that was only for um, a few of the principal characters. Mm. How do you develop the voice for, um, for these characters or what's your, what's your process there? Cause that's something I know I would not be able to keep straight. I wouldn't know very well how to develop a voice for a character. How do you do it? So it's uh it, it's that's something that makes me really really happy that you've commented on the different narrators' voices because that was something I was really really focusing on for this latest book. It's one of the um, random things that I love in a good narrator, <laughs> just in yeah. general when I'm listening if they can if they can just differentiate, you know, in the yeah. way that they'll say like the chapter name. If I can tell in the in the chapter number whose chapter it is, I'm like, that's that's really impressive <laughs> absolutely yeah i've recently finished listening to um a book called sister song uh and i can't remember off the top of my head what the um who it's by L L lucy holland sister song by lucy holland was absolutely eye-opening for me in <laughs> in this regard because it follows the story of three sisters um and uh they go through these incredible changes throughout the story and each each of the characters is so distinct it's, it's the same narrator every time right. but each of the characters is completely unique hmm. um, and these the changes that they go through throughout the book make them unique as well because one of them um, winds up transitioning um, into a boy and the character changes completely 
and oh, it's wow. absolutely incredible um and it's a really really beautiful performance mm -hmm. and as i was doing this book i really wanted to be able to um create this um idea of the different uh different sort of points of view being distinct even though it's all my voice mm. um and yeah when you're when you're working with the different character voices it's something that i've had to um sort of focus on quite a lot it's something i struggled with at the beginning um you have your sort of your middle voice which is where your voice sits and then when i'm doing male characters um if they're kind of like me sort of um young white men then it's relatively easy and i can just use my voice i might change the speed a little bit or i might change a tweak of an accent or something like that but um but generally i'll use my voice but if they are uh, a little older or if they have a sort of a darker character um then i might just drop my voice down a little bit um and that was something to distinguish Firion from the narrator's voice um mm. was that the narrator speaks in my voice because it's the most comfortable voice for me to speak with but as soon as i speak with Firion, i just need to drop my voice down just a, just a little bit and it's subtle it's not it's not voice acting in the way that you would for a an animation or something but it's enough to distinguish it in an audiobook and equally when you're doing Kyria you go in the other direction because she's a girl so she her, her voice just goes up a little bit and her her voices have a little bit more air to them and they're a little bit lighter and it's just a little bit a bit, little bit softer um and that's sort of where I start is where do I put my voice up or down from my own voice um and then from there I can add different features I might slow the voice down noticeably and that'll change the way the character feels or they might speak really really fast and they have to be really concentrating to listen to what they're saying because they're so excited um and so yeah you you change speeds you change pitches and eventually you sort of begin to think about changing accents and i'm not great at a lot of accents i have a couple of stable accents which i use but um uh, as a, as a rule i try to try to uh, leave my characters kind of in my own accent if I can um, but uh, with fantasy that's often difficult uh, because you have such disparate um, regions that people are working with and uh, that was something that was really lovely about this book having the characters um, who were from totally different places so getting to use different accents was uh, was something that was really exciting and uh, something that was a challenge but uh, that I had a lot of fun with. Yeah it's such a large cast I imagine it was hard to keep those straight I mean do you have a do you have a bank of references for yourself? long as your arm i have <laughs> i have a um uh my scripts are all marked up and um sort of notated with um with uh, al almost musical notes um to be able to see how i'm delivering them um and then within my uh my actual sort of like audio program that i use i have markers for each of the individual characters so i i can jump to bellix marker and then i can jump to Firion's marker um for this chapter because i know he's been beaten up or he's in a particularly foul mood for some reason and therefore his his voice is different um and uh, and jumping around uh within the file to be able to find references of what i did last time um and that was something that was really challenging because there's a bunch of characters here who are uh unnamed until much later on um so keeping them uh keeping all, all these sort of guard characters royce and, and oh right right, right. Um, uh, and the characters who are surrounding the main cast keeping them in order uh becomes much more challenging and uh and it's that that was um yeah that was definitely something i had to keep keep on the ball about oh gosh yeah the the guards i didn't name them right away because there were already so many names at the mm. beginning i thought just re-establishing everybody that we know at the beginning and then kind of slowly seeding those and would be easier for the reader but it's not easier for you that's for that's for sure <laughs> that's why i read the book several times to make sure that i've got all of the uh, every all of the notes that i need in one place yeah that sounds uh so 
besides some of those markers, what are the other things that you annotate? Because I, I've seen you, you've posted different things where you show a part of a page that you're reading and it looks like little parts are highlighted and you have all these, all these notes in the Word document. What are you actually doing there as you so, prepare? When I, when I first started uh, sort of learning how to do the, the dry reads of, of scripts and learning how to um, deliver a script effectively, uh, it took me ages, ages to establish a process for how I, how I notated my work. And now I don't generally notate much at all. Um, if I've got a really, really dense section with loads of characters and, or it's a particularly heightened um, moment or it's a, um, for lack of a better word, boss fight of some sort um, that, uh, that needs real attention, then I'll go in with my stylus and I'll, and I'll notate it. Um, but basically I have a tablet uh, which I read my scripts on um, and I have uh, an app with a stylus that allows me to draw on it and then I go through the sentences with um, normally just one color but sometimes a mixture of colors depending on how deep I need to go and I like I say I put these sort of almost musical notes into it um, I know, and it's a, it's a system that I've developed myself. So I know that an uptick going this way uh, will mean that my voice needs to lift at that section. Whereas an uptick going the other way knows that my voice needs to drop in this section. Um, if it's a double tick, then I know that I need to put a pause in that section to make sure that I'm hitting the tempo of, of, of what's going on. Um, a little sort of squiggly line will create uh, a sense of mystery and something about to happen. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a sort of <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. So I've 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 developed this sort of set of shorthand notes that I use to um, to just tell me what it sounds like in my head because uh, this is an eighteen-hour book and I've I've started recording the first chapter weeks ago and I can't remember what it all sounds like so it's it's really important for me to be able to go back through and remember what it all sounds like because it's been weeks and weeks and weeks since I read these uh, read these pages um, and I pre-read them before I then record a chapter but uh, it's really useful to be able to see oh yeah here it gets really fast and exciting and now at this point it has chilled out again and I can I can Oh, take a breath and calm myself. Um, yeah, so, uh, but in, in sort of my work now, generally, I don't need that. Um, it becomes a little more distracting than it is useful. Um, but when I started out, uh, I, I used to notate every single page um, because it was so important to be able to get the, the rhythm and the cadence of, of, of the piece that I was recording. I would imagine for pickups as well, just knowing what you're being dropped right into the middle of mm. would be helpful in terms of tempo and things like that that you were talking about of course I'm, I'm sure you listen to the stuff right before and after but to you know prep that performance again definitely yeah to, to know that this is a heightened section or this is a really really um sort of depressed section uh know how you're going to have to come back into a section when you're correcting something um, yeah, you're right. That's that's uh, very very valuable. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that seems well, a lot of it seems very difficult to me. But <laughs> but fitting that that pickup seamlessly in there is one of the things that seems like it would be the most most difficult because there's always something that seems to to give it away. But it's it is really difficult. Um, but uh, what's what's very nice and it's something that's helped me sort of come to terms with the process uh, is that the human ear and the human mind is very forgiving, especially for long form narration. Mm. Um, if you listen to animation, uh, like short form narration of uh, voice acting and things, especially in the last couple of years since uh, animation has been being recorded over COVID, mm. um, so in home studios, you can hear the difference in um, in sort of 
cadence and space, like the actual space that a, a, an actor is working in, you can hear that difference um, quite pronouncedly between sometimes even between lines in in a scene. Um, and uh, maybe it, maybe it's something that just vo voice nerds like me uh, and other narrators will be able to hear, and that the, the the common person won't. But um, it's it's something that I have noticed, uh, and it is something that I have been very worried about in the past. Um, but actually, you're listening to this book for 18 hours, and the mistake is literally a fraction of a second. And what oh, yeah, what so it'll nothing. It, yeah, even if it doesn't even if it doesn't fit perfectly smoothly, what will happen is that your brain will go, oh, that was something. Oh no, the story's carried on. Okay, never mind. And and that's quite sort of freeing. I still do my absolute best to get it as perfect as possible, and um, and I'm very sort of anal about how I deliver my pickups. Um, and uh, my editor is fantastic to be able to get the pickups in as smoothly as they as they do. Um, but it's a matter of um, uh, yeah, just being uh, giving it that attention to detail, but also not uh, not sweating it because otherwise, the pickup line winds up being labored um and not sounding like it's part of the original uh the the original work yeah it would just be diminishing returns at a at mm. a certain point and you tend to have pretty clean like clean versions of the recording initially um at least you know i've i've listened to you for many hours and many 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 hours <laughs> and um, I I rarely hear any sort of you know mistake that would require a pickup or or anything like that. It's just it's a very s seamless kind of experience. Um, I mean, Kingdoms on Fire, I binge listened to in about three days. I, I mean, I was like blown my ears away were bleeding, when you said you finished it, was, it. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was. Um, there really wasn't anything to to make me stop and and go hang on well there was the, there was that one line i i mm. emailed you about the where character yeah. got switched but that's that was it <laughs> so i i record using a process called punch and roll so uh the 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 playhead is sort of moving along and i'll make a mistake i'll stop i'll roll it back a few seconds press play or press record and it will play from a few seconds before that. It'll keep playing up to the point where I made the mistake. And then it'll carry on playing and start recording and allow me to hear what I just said and then carry on. Um, huh. So the out and out mistakes, things where I've made a, um, uh, like mispronounced a word or, or uh, there's been a noise outside or there's been something, something else that has actually been a mistake those get corrected while I'm going. Um, but then uh, what it's the editor's job to do is, is, is to say, hey, Jake, you mispronounced these words. Um, it wasn't noticeable to someone listening to it, but it's not right for the script. Um, or you've said these words the wrong way around. Or this sentence should have been here. Or there are all of these little mistakes which don't sound like mistakes if you're not reading the book carefully alongside it at the same time right but i wasn't I was when... just taking it as its own performance yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but when you actually compare script to performance um there are often quite a lot of mistakes uh i thought i'd done quite well on this book uh, yeah, but I, had... I was i was impressed like i said in general mm. i was impressed but but one of the things was just how seamless and clean those those first drafts that you sent me were I'm like mm. we could just we could just push publish on this <laughs> you know I, yeah I, absolutely I really but when we actually compared it um against the original manuscript uh I had over 500 pickups to do yeah because I had just I just said I'd I'd, I'd cut off a t on a word or I'd, I'd missed a word or I'd said this bit just the wrong way around. That was Ooh. more than I was hoping for by quite a lot. Um, yes. But but um, on a book that long, um, I, I generally get yeah, about, bit. yeah, yeah, e e exactly. It's a, okay. it's, it's a decent, it's a decent clip. And um, I generally get between 50 and 70 
um pickups per like i don't know per, probably per three hours or so um but because this one was so long there was quite mm -hmm. a lot of fatigue involved so towards the end of my recording sessions i just get um less and less accurate basically mm. um so if i'm if i'm doing a, a, a six or seven hour recording session then uh that will be a good few chapters that'll 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 be a lot of chapters down but i'll need to go back and correct bits um and uh within the sort of no narrator sphere um people always say don't compare don't don't worry about how many pickups um because you can't compare yourself to other other workers i know i know that i do a lot of pickups and there are other narrators who might be able to read that book and have 12 pickups um and uh i i don't i i i am very much focused on my performance and my delivery and and the sort of the emotion and the passion of what i'm doing um, and I, so I don't worry too much about my pickups, but I make sure that I process them as quickly as possible because it's not fair on my editor to have to sit there and wait for me for all my pickups. Right. It was only it was only a couple weeks for I didn't realize it was that many that you had to do. Neither did I. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> he, he, he gave me the report back and I was like, damn, I thought it was better than that. <laughs> yeah well but so did i, there it I is. yeah <laughs> i would have i never would have guessed never would have mm, guessed mm. <laughs> oh my gosh okay well um so let's let's talk some spoilery things now before mm. we do just for anybody who is going to leave at this point um where can people find you like the the books that you've done um mm. you know where can people commission you know or, or ask for commissions that kind of thing so I am on Audible uh, under Jake Ruddle, um, and I am also under my website, uh, which is jakeruddleaudio.com. Um, and uh, yeah, generally I am uh, I'm available on uh, a couple of socials, um, Jake Ruddle Audio. Um, I, I have an Instagram, um, although I don't use it very much. Um, and I'm on Facebook as well uh, and Twitter. And uh, yeah, my, my, my handle for everything is, is Jake Ruddle Audio. Um, and uh, if you want to listen to my books, then uh, they are under yeah Jake Jake Ruddle on Audible, uh, and wherever good audiobooks are sold. <laughs> okay, yes. Speaking of, this one is coming out um, any day now. If you want to get started with the first book in the Tanyuan Academy series, um, Fury and Rising, then that one is available on Audio Kobo. It's available at the library. Um, and the week that this comes out, it is also free on Spotify. So that is um, November 27th through December 3rd of 2022. So you can just get it on Spotify, see um, see what you think. And if you like it, then you can um, buy the other ones, you know, wherever you normally get audiobooks. Okay, spoiler time. Um, mm. So... These, this whole series is really long. I mean, that was a, that was a marathon. It took, it took like all year to complete all three of these um, as audiobooks. Um, so are there any scenes that stand out as the ones that are your favorites, either to perform or just ones that, that you like? I have a couple <laughs> that are my, yeah, that are yeah, my yeah. favorites, but I want to hear from you. Um this last book is fresh in my mind and uh there was uh there is a scene towards the end uh before the final sort of conflict begins to ramp back up uh and we have Chitana and Kyria mm -hmm. hiding away in their um uh, in their sort of foxhole ready to be uh, to to go out to battle and there is this conversation between Chitana, the the Amiran advisor, the stalwart teacher and um and sort of um spiritual guide, and Kyria, the 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 queen in training, the the person who is finding her feet and and finding her voice and her power in this throughout this whole story. And there is such doubt and fear 
in Kyria at that time. And Shatana is just so confident and so loving and so powerful. I I didn't have much um, of a sort of connection with Chitana through the first two books. She was an interesting character to read, but she didn't really make me sing. Um, but reading reading her through these chapters, I had to I would I would finish the chapter, and I had to then stop, just turn everything off, and go and have a cup of tea because um, I was crying. Um, and I had to then come back and listen back to what I had done to make sure that I hadn't, my voice hadn't cracked or I hadn't like lost my, lost something in what I was delivering because I was, I was so sort of wrapped up in what these characters were saying to each other. I was, I, I felt so impassioned. It was, it was a real sort of flow state um, to, 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 to work through. Just having, uh, yeah, having, having Chitana's voice as as her sort of guide guiding Kyria into this final battle and in becoming the powerful character that she is and that was something that I loved about this book is how utterly not ruthless but but driven Kyria becomes by the end of the story she is she is a queen and she is standing in her space, on her feet, and she's strong through absolutely everything. And God, it got me right here. It was, it was, uh, yeah, it was incredible. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, yeah, some of my my favorite stuff um, to write and to go back to are some of the like heart to heart conversations. Um, mm. One of my one of my favorites is at the beginning of Kingdoms on Fire when um fearing and bard are in the cellar and uh you know bard is is uh still recovering he's he's injured and you know he's gonna just continue to wear all those scars and whatever but the conversation between those two guys it was one of my favorite things i think i've ever written because fearing is such an uptight character who just does not like to show his emotions he would unless it's anger you know he's just mm. very angry sort of person but I liked that they were you know able to really finally be honest with each other and show that they care for each other because because mm. the way that I've always read um Furian is like the 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 books to me are him learning what love is if, from his perspective that's what his whole journey is about mm. you know he wants it so desperately and and the only way he thinks he can get it is by demanding this admiration and respect that he's so desperately trying to get the whole time but bard is the first person apart from his sister that he like that he loves you know mm. he thinks he loves Kyria, but he doesn't until the end no like, he doesn't know what what that is but yeah, the, the conversation between those two guys and how they understand, how Bard understands him so well and and how they can just care for one another and not, you know, for fear and not fear judgment or anything. That was... That's something that I've loved throughout it, this this theme of, of love <laughs> being absolutely all powerful and um and way more than just romantic love um mm. there's this there's the brotherhood uh between bard and Firion, and there's the um the passion that the characters have for their um their place their their, their country and their the the way that they are their, their ways of life um, that they need to defend and there's 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 love all throughout it and it's absolutely incredible thanks yeah Kyria like figures figures it out sooner a whole lot sooner <laughs> and then she's just you know like kind of finding the the power in that and uh in the in the final book but yeah and then the party <clears throat> the party before they before they all go out to battle the conversation with Chitana is like like two chapters after it's like the aftermath mm. of the of the party but those like yeah. those 
three chapters or or so um maybe a few more but like right before they all they all go it's just some of my my favorite stuff that that you did as well um I actually sent the just the the party scene to uh my mom and my sister <laughs> I'm like you have to at least listen to this you know because they they had it's it's kind of a big ask to say hey you know I'm gonna listen to uh 45 hours or whatever um, obviously I've, I'm all about it, but I'm like, just, here's an example of just how great, you know, the performance is. And I, I felt like it was like the perfect marriage of your performance. And, you know, I was on the top of my game as well. And it was just, mm -hmm. you know, just, just so, so Absolutely. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I remember as well, there was a moment when I was doing my pre-reads, uh, where I was initially reading the book for the first time and making notes and, and, uh, sort of establishing my my script document um, and I was reading through and I just about it was it was in the the final sort of 10 chapters or so and uh, I I just gave up making notes completely I, I just I just I couldn't I couldn't be a professional about it any longer I just needed to read it like a reader <laughs> and um, I remember having to stop and get my phone and email you while I was reading and I, that was, one of, and that I was just saying, one of the best moments of my life that was I got the email like minutes after I first saw one of my books on a Barnes and Noble table for the first time like featured <laughs> and amazing. so I was already like I had pulled myself I was I was crying you know and I pulled myself together and then I opened my email and I got that and I'm like this this is this is can I just can this be my life <laughs> please <laughs> <laughs> but but I, yeah, sent, but... I sent you this email and I, I can't remember exactly what I said in terms of words but <laughs> I said Carly <laughs> if you hurt these boys I will be so angry because I was reading the um <laughs> the the sort of disappearance of Bard and Jory and and the danger that they were facing and the I was so so invested in the the sort of romance that was budding there and I was absolutely besotted and then he was taken and <laughs> I didn't know where he'd gone and I hadn't read the rest of it yet and I needed to know I was I was I was so ready to be so angry <laughs> luckily luckily you'll find out when you listen to it but um yeah it was uh, uh yeah I was I was incredibly impassioned <laughs> and, uh, that, was, that was just just amazing yeah yeah Bart Bart was interesting like he was he was always he was always one of my favorites and I always knew he was gonna play a big role but and I always knew that he was he was somebody who was like so loving and so I just, I saw him ending up with somebody, you know, mm. not all the characters do, um, you know, it's not a perfectly nice bow for everyone, but, um, but it, like finding, like figuring out what made sense, like it was, that was, that was quite the journey. I, I shipped him with so many different people along the way. And I didn't know who he was going to end up with until the middle of kingdoms on fire. And then I'm like, oh, really? it makes perfect sense. Mm hmm yeah <clears throat> yeah Brilliant. I mean there was there was an early part like I had just started I had just started the final book and I thought Bard and Kyria might end up together and then I was like no it doesn't it doesn't feel it doesn't feel right it doesn't feel right um like I wanted I wanted there to be somebody who appreciated Bard fully which is why you couldn't end up with Firion <laughs> because he would always be like second to Firion, yeah you know um little brother yeah right and I, so I wanted there to be somebody who like truly recognized his greatness <laughs> and somebody who could push him in a direction that he normally wouldn't be pushed you know so with with Jory I thought it was kind of perfect because they admire each other so much mm. even though like not that many people admire either one of them and have these really wonderful strengths that just aren't typical necessarily. And Bard is so responsible and kind of concerned. And Jory is so the other direction. You know, he's he's so kind of fun and, and carefree. 
I thought that it was that they just balanced each other out and I as soon as I as soon as I figured out that they made that that it was them I'm like okay yep that's I think that's good <laughs> as I was reading it and as I was um sort of preparing my jory character um I was sort of watching it almost um gossipy like feeling almost like a gossip I was I was watching I was like <sighs> jory's Jory's falling for Jory's flirting. Oh, oh, this is good. This is going to be exciting. And uh, and I was getting so excited. And um and it just it 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 filled out my uh, my sort of character for Jory so beautifully. Um and uh, yeah, I, I I had so much fun with the pair of them because they do sort of finish each other. They are they are two halves in the same way as Virion and Kyria are, but to a much more sort of rounded extent where Bard and Jory are small like this, whereas Firion and Kiri are en <laughs> enormous and they're such huge characters with such polar um, sort of separations. Mm -hmm. uh, the boys are so much closer together and so much, um, so much more subtle and nuanced. And, and like I said earlier, the, the, the development of Kyria coming into herself and finding her confidence and becoming not just the Kepras being being sort of trying to fill her mother's boots and whatnot, mm -hmm. but actually being, no, I am here. I am, I am a keeper. I am a queen. This is who I am. Um, and Bard doing the same thing, mm -hmm. but with so much less volume about it um him him actually saying no i am valuable i don't need to prove myself look at look, look at what i'm doing i am i am getting through all of the adversity that is thrown at him and he still becomes this powerful character who is still so soft and gentle yeah i, I, yeah, I didn't wonderful. want him to like that that has always been so important to me because they're like to me they're the real people I didn't want to mm. force them into being like oh now Bard's this extrovert because that's better for some reason like he's he's not but this is him taking who he who he is and what he is and mm. just making the most of it and becoming like the best version of himself I like I like that he ends up being the the real MVP you know nobody cared about him and then <laughs> here he is at the end you know, I knew that that's what the what the final book was going to be. And so, mm. you know, when you got Bard's voice right, I'm like, OK, <laughs> mm -hmm. you have to, even though in the first book, he doesn't seem that important, you know, ish. But no, means. definitely. It was it was and it was so fun getting the new perspectives, being able to voice uh, even because e even though I'm using my narrator's voice, getting to voice bellic and bard as well <clears throat> yes um, yeah i liked i liked so doing... exciting yeah i liked doing all those all those even bellic like there really aren't many readers who like bellic because he's so evil <laughs> and understandably so you know it's fine if if you've read it and you don't like bellic but i en i enjoy writing all of these characters i enjoyed writing from his perspective even though he was like Firion 2.0. Um, Surely yeah. Firion is Bellic 2.0. <clears throat> yeah, I mean they're 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 the same person. He's yeah. Bellic is who Firion was going to to be. When I was doing my mastering this morning and and actually uploading the files, one of the sections I listened to was an argument between Firion and Bellic, and um and they they were fighting 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 cat and dog and um and Firion shouts at him and says uh something like uh i don't i don't want to be like you and <laughs> bellic turns to him and says you are me and it was like oh god it's so um <laughs> uh, just circles within circles these characters are so uh, so sort of interlinked all of them uh, I, yeah, yes yes <laughs> Um, so do you have any any other like I I love the behind the scenes stuff that you've shared already. That's awesome. 
Um, but I'd love to hear if you have any other um, things. Not, I mean, Kingdoms on Fire is the freshest in my mind as well. I was trying to think back to some of the the earlier books myself. But um, are there any other kind of Easter eggs or um, just the the only other scene that pops immediately to mind as one that I really, really enjoyed was the um, the it was the scene in the first book where Firion is first coming to uh, Mon Perenath and he's at he's at he's being shown around, and then oh, yeah. the the kids all go out because they're kids at this point, um, or they feel much more like kids at this point, and they all sort of they go out. Um, with Jory leading leading the way and be and just being sort of naughty um, and uh, and skulking about and and sneaking into places and then sneaking back in through the windows and and um, and there was a real sort of lovely middle school um, just upbeatness about it and the way the way that they were having having sort of so much fun about it being uh, being um, ex exciting moving around these uh, these places that the characters have lived for their entire lives but Firion is showing them a new way of seeing these places because um, he's this totally alien outsider who who thinks in a completely different way to um, to all of the kingdom folk and um, that was that was something that really uh, really stuck with me and coming to the latest book seeing how far the characters have come how sort of serious they are now um uh i was always sort of harking back to that time especially scenes like the party um was wanting <clears throat> to sort of catch some of that uh um innocence that they still had back in that time before everything hit the fan oh gosh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah when i when i listened to um into the unreal uh when did that when did that come out july mm, yeah. i think it was june ish when i when i listened to it yeah man stuff to, i'm like wow i don't remember it even being this dark and i was like in it it's yeah it gets so so serious and Furion makes such terrible choices which was just... always the plan but but shoot like i just want to smack the boy like like <laughs> come on pay attention <laughs> no <laughs> yeah i like i like i like what you said then how it was <laughs> how it was an interesting challenge to to read somebody who who thinks sincerely that he's doing like that he's making these choices that make mm. sense and his own reasoning and there's no there's no ironic kind of nod to it or anything but mm, mm. um but like we both know this is like you're being the, the absolute worst um so i was when i was thinking about my own behind the scenes easter egg things um remember the remember the scene on torith the island um when mm. Marion sneaks into the compound and it's all terrible so I wrote that during parent teacher conferences <laughs> it was like the last scene I wrote in the second book all I had was you know write this couple of chapters in there and so in between my parent teacher conferences it was this kind of very sketchy violent <laughs> stuff that I just had secretly in my computer I I feel like some of the some of the stuff <laughs> random places ended up working out fairly well like I was in a mm. hospital waiting room, my my roommate had broken mm. her arm, and that's I and I just long handed the um, Kyria Jory conversation when he finds out that she's been, you know, dating Virian, and that one I like didn't change at all. Just oh, fantastic! You know, I'm just when you're bored, I guess parent teacher conferences with nobody coming in. It's something that's um, I've always. In, in my dabblings with doing writing of my own, <coughs> excuse me, um, it's something that I've always uh, tried to instill in myself is just writing whenever. You don't have to have three hours set aside with your keyboard and your and your cup of coffee and everything being perfect. No, no, just, you just sat on the bus on a on a on a receipt, do some scribbles, 
and I always try to to hold that in my mind but it's so hard yeah you, that's that's not always what I do mm -hmm. I tend to have these seasons of mm -hmm. you know I'll write a ton like I wrote each one of these the majority of each one of these books in successive summers you know um and then I just will hardly write at all <laughs> mm. for several months and things will kind of percolate and then you know but it goes like that and I try not to judge myself for it <laughs> so exactly I'm doing yeah. something mm -hmm. but yeah hopefully I, I I didn't I I hope it, it's a little bit weird to talk about my own stuff with like glowing terms I mean there are things that going back I would I would switch but like I do care about these characters so much and mm. it's it's cool to talk to somebody else who kind of sees them as the people that that they are what's yeah. been a real pleasure as well is seeing how not only the characters have developed but the writings developed as well mm -hmm. um the 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 first book is a very different book to the third book and and well hopefully <laughs> well yeah but but it it that's been a really really fun process to go through um and and getting used to the characters in one voice and then having to sort of find them again um as as the word as the words that are coming off of the page are changing um has has been really really uh exciting um because uh, it 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 starts out nice and then and then gets stronger and stronger and and um the characters i feel so much more confident with them because i'm performing them and i know who they are by this point um and that's uh, the 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 two things sort of go hand in hand which is really lovely yeah well it it has been just a complete pleasure to talk to you again i know i've you know i've talked for quite a while but it's just how often do you get to have this kind of experience i mean the the collaboration that we have i think is a pretty special thing and the audiobooks that you've uh, performed are just spectacular people should should check them out but um yeah i guess i'll i'll close things out and just say find uh jake and his books if it's not mine then he has others as well just search his name on amazon and i'm sure they'll all they'll all pop up um but yes like this video if you like it subscribe for more writing publishing in the author life stuff and um thank you so much for coming on for this interview thank you so much for the opportunity it has been an absolute honor <laughs>